as I get out of the homestay it's a little bit of a bad road so let's cross this and see what else is in store for us I'm quite underconfident on this bike to be honest in mine I would have been a bit more confident that's why I'm not even wearing the gloves right now I want to clear this off-road part and then you know put the gloves on that's a tough bro so many stones and the stones are wet and they tend to slip And that's how you lose balance. This is going to be difficult, but the key is no matter what, don't stop on a slope like this. And now there's a fucking turn. Again, it's the same thing. The key is not to stop. pushing and keep doing micro corrections to change your direction back to back and we made it uh, oh my god all right so welcome to day 12 of the epic epic ride the weather is uh, quite foggy i was waiting to see if we can see the sun but the sun hasn't shown itself yet i mean it's risen there's daylight but then it's not shining per se it's all hiding behind these clouds and fog insane amount of uh, you know cold weather and the bike is saying that it is 14 degrees but it feels much much worse so the first stop for today is the uh, zigzag road viewpoint we're gonna go there and stop and see if we can get a good view of these winding twisty roads so if you google Zuluk and check the images you will see a signature image and that is from these winding roads what a nice village man it is tucked away inside a valley a lot of homestays over here so if you're coming in planning on staying I was staying at the Zuluk village homestay if you do come to Zuluk village homestay try and see if you can get the room number one because that has the best view of the valley down below it is expensive it could cost you up to a thousand rupees per head if you're in a big group and uh, if you're like a solo rider like me then it would cost you 1800 I know I find uphill rides a little more challenging than downhill you let me know in the comments which one you feel are easier and uh, slap a like guys slap a like on this video this thing is a lot of effort I want to keep making these videos I want to keep going to exciting places if I get some amount of views and likes on these videos it just increases my you know enthusiasm of doing these rides so Indian riders are a very small minority 
Although India has the most number of two wheelers sold, hobby riding is a very small community. It is growing at a very rapid pace, but it's still a very small community. Not many of them go on regular rides. People even buy big bikes. They do stupid shit like going on breakfast rides on weekends. You have a bike capable of doing wonders and you're just taking them on a highway to a f***ing chai shop and that's the most uh, of excitement that's gonna see if you're buying a bike that is worth 30 lakhs and then you do like 2000 kilometers a year you're just you know letting all that power and excitement go to a waste take it out guys take it out go places and at least once a month Try to do a long ride, five to six hundred kilometers a day, two days, twelve hundred kilometers over a month. Put at least ten thousand kilometers on the bike. Only then it's justified. In my opinion, it's better to go for motorcycles like the 390 Adventure or the Himalayan 450 for adventure touring. You can do a significant amount of off-roading and these bikes they are apt for Indian highway conditions. Your opinion can differ and give a shit. <laughs> I think I can see it from here. Look at that road. Woohoo! We just came up from there, guys. Look at that. Look. <laughs> okay, we have reached the spot number one. I'm gonna spend a couple of maybe a few minutes over here and see if the fog clears up for a quick glimpse of the view. <laughs> Welcome from the zigzag road viewpoint. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you can see it a little bit. I waited for about uh, 10 minutes at the zigzag road uh, viewpoint but the fog didn't clear but I, I did get a decent shot when uh, there was a little bit of a clearing for a couple of minutes next up is old Baba Harbhajan Mandir uh, look at what we overcame man <laughs> oh my god, I have completed the hairpin bends. I can only see about 50 meters ahead of me. This is insane weather, insane amount of fog. I have reached Lungtung, approximately another 20 kilometers to old Harpajan Singh Temple. I'm hoping as time goes by, this fog clears up a little. Let's just pray for some sunshine. Give me some sunshine and that's it. Don't give me anything. As of now, maybe something else later on. But right now, just give me sunshine. Uh, Alright guys, things are getting from bad to worse. The best thing right now would be to reach Kupup village top there until the weather gets a bit better all right Jai Bajrang Bali Kupup is 12 kilometers probably take about half an hour for me to reach there 20 to 30 is the speed that I can maintain on these roads no more than that okay now I don't know which way the road is turning. Alright, thankfully I'm able to see a few signboards. 
Hey, so here we are at the old Harbhajan Singh Ji Mandir. I don't think I can get off the bike. I don't think I can go inside because I can take my shoes off. There is a very nice shivling over there. Let's press on. Jai Baba Harbhajan. Jai Volinath. I got six kilometers to go to Kupup. And this is going to be a long journey. <laughs> it's going to be an arduous and long journey. Man, I can't see shit. Slow and steady. Slow and steady, guys. That is how we are going to reach Koop Hoop. Look at these guys, man. Thank you so much, BRO. Even in this weather, they're like... You know, clearing the road off of debris and snow. I gotta take a leak as well. Very badly. If I pull my PP out over here, I'm sure it'll freeze and fall off. So I'm not doing that. Oh, Kupup is two kilometers. Oh my God. You, you don't know the amount of <laughs> happiness that has given me. I thought it was four kilometers, it's two. My hands are so cold right now. Another reminder to self get heated gloves or heated grips. It is crucial when you ride in this weather. Oh yeah, I've reached the check post. Uh, so that guy's gonna take a break here. Before we press on further. Hey guys, hello from Mathula. <laughs> this is not the topmost point. Uh, you gotta go a bit more further to go to the viewpoint. But uh, I tried going, I went all the way up to the second level, and you have to walk even more further to get to over there I don't have the stamina to do that so this is it from Nathula Pass and uh, I will see you in Songmo Lake next alright guys peace out hello guys welcome back so, I just came down from Nathula. Nathula was not very uh, photogenic. <laughs> the problem with these spots is that there's, there's too many tourists. In North Sikkim, there was a lot of people. But then, over here, there's like five times more. Look at that, that's the Songmo Lake. You gotta go all the way down there. And let's see. I might stop, I might not stop. Because uh, there's too much crowd over there. I don't want to stop my bike anywhere in the crowd. But I'm just soaking this view, guys. This is Songmo Lake. Uh, here's another view. Uh, almost the same view, but then from a little bit closer there's a cable car that takes you to that point over there uh, I don't know if my finger is pointing in the right direction but uh, over there and then it brings you back there's uh, so many things to do over here in Songmo Lake you can uh, do a, a yak ride basically you ride on a yak Ah, the people over here are really, really cool, man. Shout out to the people of Sikkim. Usually in a lot of tourist places, the locals, they kind of despise the tourists. They're like, yeah, fuck you, you come here to our place and, uh, you know, dirty the place and stuff. They don't, they don't uh, respect you. Hey, okay, okay, hey, pay me money. Here, take food, here, do whatever you want. But then the hospitality in Sikkim is 
next level gang talk is 36 kilometers that is our destination for today these are the yaks that you can ride look at how beautiful they are all decorated horns and stuff they are huge huge creatures but then they seem to be very uh, you know gentle look at the amount of crowd over here there's no point in stopping I mean too many people I don't like crowded places there's another yak there's another there's another there's another <laughs> you get the drift I almost feel not almost I actually feel quite gloomy and uh, as I descend these mountains it's the last time I'm gonna see them for a little while but I think after this ride I can say maybe you know it's a better idea to have at least one other you know riding companion with you so that in times of need you have at least one person who can lend you a hand ah oh, the fog has started again 30 kilometers to Gangtok don't be silly the road is hilly wow they even know how to rhyme So that, my friends, was East Thikim, Natula and Zuluk checked off of the list. I did record a lot of footage while coming back from Sikkim to Raipur, but then it's generally me bitching about how bad Indian roads are. So I don't want to get into that um, negative tone after having such a great journey. That's it for this video and that's it for this series. With this, the Sikkim Odyssey comes to a conclusion. I hope all of you had fun watching this series and I hope I can do a lot more of such uh, travels. And until then, stay safe, ride safe. Peace out, guys.